Okay, so today we are going to be looking at uh, this friction example here, uh, this uh, friction to projectile problem, and uh, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and dive in. We're going to draw a little diagram here um, of the table. Oops, looks like we're stuck here. Oh, there we go. All right, so we're going to draw a little uh, diagram of the table here put a box on top, draw a little uh, velocity vector, and get everything in. Alright, so first we're going to start out with the uh, given information available. Uh, the initial velocity of this box is uh, 5.37 meters. So we're going to go ahead and write that down, or meters per second, sorry. Um, the range of the box, uh, this distance here, is one meter. Easy enough. And the coefficient of friction that we got is equal to 0.48. And that's this little mu symbol here. Alright, there's a couple other... Uh, units that we need, so we need the mass, which is uh, 323 grams, so the mass of the box is 323 grams, which is also uh, point, um, .303 kilograms or 323, three, sorry. Alright, and then gravitational field, uh, the uh, gravitational constant is uh, 7 point 7.4 newtons per kilogram, which uh, is also the same as 7.4 uh, meters per second squared. And it's going to fall 1.25 meters, so that's going to be the H value. And that looks like we got it. So the question that uh, this problem is asking is, we're going to determine the speed of the box at the edge of the table and determine the time that the box will be a projectile and also the horizontal range traveled. So let me just think here for a second. This is how we're going to tackle this problem. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to break up these different ranges. So this is A, this is B, and here is C. And this just helps me kind of figure stuff out. And also it's good to kind of map where the box is going to go. So it's going to take off here, go flying down, and go and end up here. And we want to find the range from this distance here, which we're going to call B to C. So the range of B to C is right here. And we want to calculate the time that it covers that distance. So that's going to be the time from B to C. And also the range from B to C. And that's what we're trying to solve. Okay. Alright, mu, got all our values. Alright, so let's tackle this thing. Um, the first important thing to do is calculate the time uh, from this distance here, b to c, and that is with the easy and simple h equals one half a t squared equation. And we just plug in our values. h we know is 1.25 meters. 
and uh, let's see, let's move this over here. Oops. All right, h is 1.25. The uh, acceleration is going to be the gravitational acceleration. So that's going to be one half of 7.4. So yeah, let me just rewrite this. And then t squared. So 1.25 equals uh, 7.4 times 1 half, which equals 3.7 times t squared. And we're going to divide 3.7 from both sides to isolate t over here. And we're also going to take the square root and get rid of that exponent. So t is going to be equal to the square root of 1.25 divided by 3.7, which equals... And just use my calculator really quick here. 0.58 seconds. So 0 0.58 seconds. And give yourselves a pat on the back because we just got the time and it was that easy. So 0.58 seconds is the time between B and C that it takes for the block to fall to the bottom. So it's going to travel here and end up here and it's going to take 0.58 seconds. Alright, let's just move this over here so that we have a little bit more space. And let's uh, box our answer because it's always fun to do that. And before I go any further, uh, this 0.58 seconds, uh, basically once, once you go over to this website and you try entering your answers, it's going to ask you for the time in milliseconds. So let's just go ahead and convert this seconds to milliseconds by multiplying this value by a thousand and so 0.58 is going to equal 580 milliseconds and this will just save us time for when we're entering our answers all right now we're going to do the hardest thing on in this problem we're going to go back to basics just like angler taught us <coughs> early on in the year and we're going to make a force diagram for this box. So we got the force normal, which we know is going to be equal and opposite to force gravity. And we're going to assign our negative direction to be going down. So whatever uh, the answer is for force gravity is going to be a negative uh, number. When we do the calculations, it will be positive. We're going to get a positive value, but just remember the direction we're going in is negative, so we'll have to apply a negative uh, negative sign to the equation, or to the answer, I mean. Alright, so let's get cracking. F of G, how we calculate that is we're going to take the mass of the box and multiply it by the gravitational constant right here, which is going to be equal to 0.323 kilograms times 7.4 meters per second squared. And so F of G is going to be equal to 7 point, nope, sorry, 323, 0.323 times 7.4, which is 2.4 newtons. And since this is the negative direction, we're going to apply a negative sign to that. And force normal has to be opposite of force of gravity. Um, since they're equal and opposite, and Newton proved this, so force normal is going to be 2.4 Newtons. And this right here is going to be the friction, force of friction. And how we calculate that is early on in the year we got an equation that's going to be really helpful here, where the force of friction is equal to the uh, coefficient of friction, which is this value here, times the force normal of the box. And so the force friction is going to be equal to 0.48 times 2.4 newtons. And so the force friction is going to be equal to 2.4 times 0.48. 
1.15 newtons. And also, uh, there is another negative direction here. Since the box is moving to the right, this way, in the positive direction, we know that the friction is going to be negative because the box is slowing down. So we're just going to put a negative sign in front of this uh, force friction here. And let me make this stuff smaller so we can have more room. Just going to move it over here. All right. Let's see what we got to do with this now. Right, so let's go back to our equation F net equals MA. Since the force of gravity cancels out the force normal when you add them together, though that's not going to be our F net. Our F net is going to be the friction value, whatever that is. But brilliantly, we just found out that it's 1.5 newtons. So uh, the F net is going to be negative 1.15 newtons right here equals the mass of the box, which is point. 323 three kilograms times A. And we just divide by 0.323 from both sides. Oops. I have a little bit of a writing error here. 0.323. And A is going to be equal to negative. I'll just grab my calculator here. Negative 3.56. Running out of space here. Let's try that again. 3.56 meters per second squared. And let's box this up. Oops. All right. So now we have time, we have uh, acceleration, and uh, what we want to find is the force or velocity in uh, final right here. So we're going to use the, ex the equation Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2 times the acceleration times the change in x. And the change in x is just the range right here, because if you go from A to B, it covers 1 meter, and that is delta x. So it's going to be Vf squared equals the initial velocity, 5.37 squared plus 2 times the acceleration down here, negative 3.56, times 1. And the 1 is kind of redundant, so we can just ignore it. So 5.37 squared is 28.84. And then that's going to be minus 2 times negative 3.56, which is 7, negative 7.12. So the velocity final squared is going to be equal to 28.84 minus 7.12, 21.72. And then we're going to take the square root of this to get the velocity final, which should be equal to 4.66 meters per second. Let's box up this answer. All right, we're at the home stretch now. All we got to solve is the range for B to C, and that's really simple. It's going to be R equals vxt, this equation, and we only got to plug in two things. We got to plug in the vx, which is going to be equal to the velocity final, since it's the velocity in the x direction, and it's always going to be the same when the box is falling, 
So 4.66 times t, and the t is right here, 0.58. That's the t. So r is going to be equal to 4.66 times 0.58, which is 2.7, 2.7 meters. Let's box up this answer and fill it in here because it's pretty satisfying. Show all the hard work you did. All right, well, now we're going to see if uh, our answers match up with uh, what they're looking for. So we're going to go here and enter our answers. So my name is Dom. Final table speed, would we say that was? Velocity final, 4.66. Time in the air in milliseconds. We already did that conversion, so it saved us some time. So 580. And the range as a projectile, 2.7 meters. Oops, not 3.7, 2.7. All right, well, let's see our work. So the box is going to go flying. Zoom, there it goes. Let's see, it's past one meter, past two meters, should almost get to three meters, there we go, and you see that our calculations are correct. So hope you get the same calculations as well. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, and uh, good luck on your projectile motion problem.